And a first of its kind, the Tanzanian government, as well as various financiers, have signed a deal involving local and international commercial banks, as well as underwriting by multilateral financial institutions and commercial issuers. Joining us now from Nairobi to discuss commercial banks as alternative sources for much needed development capital, we're joined by John Ngumi, who's head of investment banking at Africa or for Africa at CFC Stambeck Bank. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Let's start off with what's just happened here for Tanzania. Uh, I think it's interesting times when we're starting to see coordination between commercial banks and multilateral donors, but it seems to be the latest faction, the way it's going to happen, syndicated learning. Interesting times indeed, yes. Um, what's just happened? We've just arranged $250 million for the Tanzania government to, uh, to undertake infrastructure, and your introduction is quite right. It's a collaborative effort between commercial banks in Tanzania, pension funds in Tanzania, um, insurers, offshore, international lenders uh, to come up with this $250 million, which, if my, mind, if my memory serves me right, is pretty, pretty much a first for this part of the world. All right, but we have seen for the last few months a lot of effort being taken by banks to talk to regulators to try to deepen the capital markets so that you can start issuing corporate bonds to raise financing for infrastructure. How far have those efforts come, do you think? Um, the Kenyan markets have seen two infrastructure bond issues. Uh, the Kenyan government itself has an annual infrastructure bond issue for the last two, three years. So we've gone quite some way towards developing a local currency infrastructure bond market. Mm. The difference with the Tanzania loan is that this is a foreign currency denominated loan. It's a yeah. bank product as opposed to a capital markets product. All right. Now, how different is that? You know, uh, let's talk about the operating environment in Tanzania. Whenever we've seen major IPOs, for instance, on the stock exchange, the regulators have always wanted to restrict the participation of other EAC member states, particularly the Kenyans. When you're taking it out of the capital markets and making it a bank product, does it make it easier? It definitely is a different process. It is a process that is more more familiar with people because it is a bank process. It is not you going to the capital markets to try and issue paper. It is you going to people whose uh, business is to lend. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, lending in, lending in dollars is, is a slightly more complex affair, but there's no real difference in lending to the Tanzania government in this way in yeah. dollars than, yeah, than it is for what banks do every day. Let's talk about lending in dollars being a little bit more complex because obviously we are seeing volatility in the international currency markets, uncertainty as to the state of the U.S. economy and the European recovery process, and many people not really sure whether investing in dollars is the right thing to do, just given the volatility of exchange rates. How does the Tanzanian shilling fare, and what would the repayment schedule be and the affordability for the government be? Um, if I knew how the, the Tanzanian shilling would fare, I'd be a billionaire. But um, <laughs> in, ta in terms of, uh, of, of borrowing in dollars, the reality remains that the dollar markets remain deeper than local currency markets. Uh, local banks do have access to, access to dollar resources. After all, we are exporting economies, we are open economies. And uh, yes, the Tanzanian government would have to repay from its, its regular tax and other mm -hmm. revenue collections and mm -hmm. would have to c convert its, ta its Tanzania shillings into dollars. Right. So there is, there is an exchange at risk. That can't, can't be avoided. Right. The, mi the mitigant of that is that the hope is the infrastructure projects that this will finance will enable right. Tanzania to generate more dollars right. in, in, in the future. Before we talk about those projects, I think the question I'm really raising here, Mr. Ngumbi, is the fact that we've seen a, um, a downgrade on uh, the US dollar and basically on the American economy effectively raises the cost of borrowing. Does that have bearing on this particular loan for the Tanzanians taking it in dollars? Um, we had closed the terms of this loan before the, the downgrade occurred. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I don't think it will. Um, this loan had been, had been, had been, the, 
the terms on it had, had been cleared before then. But obviously, anybody approaching the market now would, would have to have mm. to take cognizance of that. The reality that remains, though, that there is so much capacity to be, to be established all across Africa that with, uh, with, with a proper story, with a proper justification, I believe right. we'll still be able to access those kinds of funds. All right, let's talk about infrastructure priorities in a country like Tanzania. I think most of the big economies are really feeling the pressure of you know, energy security problems and this drought that's exacerbated the situation for hydroelectricity in the region. Is that the target area? Absolutely. If you think of it as the spine of the economy, what you need first and foremost are is power, is roads, is ports, is, 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 is a system to operate uh, the economy and to get goods round. A, a country like Tanzania has, has, has got enormous resources, but you've got to get those resources out of the ground if it's mining or agricultural resources, and you've got to transport them to where the demand is, uh, whether internally or out to export markets. So the bulk of that money is going to, to that spine of the economy. 